Can Western countries finally accept the fact that a lot of Asian countries are starting to surpass them in the Olympics because a lot of them are agitated by this? Well, let's be honest. It's only about swimming and tennis. And I'm telling you, if the Chinese are beating us, they might be cheating us. Ooh. We got to talk about it. Andrew Pan John Lei just set his own world record in the Olympics, winning the 100 meter freestyle. Andrew, he beat out. Kyle Chalmers, David Popovici, Nandor Nemeth, Maxine Grosset, Joshua Salchow, Jax Alexi, Chris Giuliano, a bunch of white guys. Oh my gosh. I mean, he's the fastest swimmer in the world right now. I think he just recorded the fastest leg in the four by one mix um, ever of his freestyle leg. So that's crazy, man. Well, actually, they just beat America. It went uh, China one, United States two, France number three. But we got to talk about it because immediately afterwards, Andrew, the British team said, there's no point in winning if you're not winning fair. And I feel like if you've been contaminated twice as an honorable person, you should be out of the sport. But we know that sport's not that simple. And we know that the Chinese aren't that honorable. All right, guys. So we got to address the former doping uh, situations for the Chinese swimming team that kind of brought all this to light, which makes a lot of people, but not a lot of people, just a, a group of people doubt that Chinese actually won fairly, but we're also going to break it down. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Um, Andrew, it is also including uh, Navarro who lost to... Zheng Qingwen, Zheng Qingwen went on to win the uh, women's solo tennis gold, saying, I didn't respect her as a competitor. I don't know how you have so many fans. Right. So, uh, but this one's not a doping case, right? So no, no, there's, no. there's the doping accusations that happened with the swim team, which did happen. And then this tennis star who's really young, but from China, and she's just killing it. She just won gold medal. David, people are so mad. Well, people are just mad to see Chinese people win now. I will say this. We got to talk about the swimming team real quick, though. Right, right, right. Because Michael Phelps came out and said, he said, you know, I'm not really like pointing fingers or anything like that. But a lot of people are like, but you did just come out and say it after the Chinese beat the American team. Right. What did he say? Well, he said, if you test positive, you should never be allowed to come back and compete again cut and dry. I believe in one and done. Mm. So basically, long story short, Andrew, in 2022, um, there was two of the swimmers on the four by 100 relay race. Not Pons on lay. Not Pons on lay. Not the world record holder and not the final guy. But two of the guys did test positive for a recovery drug. Mm. But then basically it was explained away by eating a burger or eating a steak. Okay. Still kind of sus of a story. Let's be honest. It is. It and, is. and guys, I'm a Chinese American. I don't mind seeing China succeed, but I will say this. That was a sus story. Right, right, right. But a lot of people are saying that they are getting, the Chinese athletes are being tested by far the most out of any athletes right. so far at the Olympics due to the accusations. Right. Now, none now, of them are failing anything. Exactly. So the Chinese team, especially the Chinese swim team in the Olympics this year, was tested by far the most for doping out of any athlete at the Olympics, right? So they got tested the most. They were all clear, and they still won in swimming, right? But it is true a couple years ago, some of them tested positive for recovery. So obviously that past, people are using that to basically slander the present. Right, right, right. So some people are saying the Americans didn't win like they were meant to, and everybody's just mad because the Chinese guys were tested 20 times in four days. Somebody said China would lose all of their athletes at the Olympics if they didn't dope. And basically, somebody is saying that everybody in the Olympics essentially cheats as much as they possibly can. But it's just like some people just get more scrutiny for it. Yeah, so listen, we got a list of things that you got to remember when it comes to all these doping cases and just Olympics in general, when it comes to the East rising, because I think a lot of this contention, it does come from the fact that it is China of all countries versus if it was like South Korea, you know, which or Japan, are, but, but they're actually Japan. doing really well too. Yeah. And I mean, just to go over it, guys, the anti-doping test figures, you know, uh, China doesn't even rank that high in percentage of positive doping tests. And as far as medals that got ever taken away for doping, obviously Russia has all of them, and then China doesn't even rank very high. So although there has been some doping suspicion, it's not that Chinese are doping all the time. Right, right, right. By the way, it is extremely common, Andrew, for all Olympic athletes to claim that they have asthma, heart disease, ADHD, and postural orthoscotic trachea, you know, 
trachardia syndrome. Basically, these are things that allow you to test for drugs, but you get an exemption. Yeah, interesting. Well, guys, sports people will push the limit as always. Right. I mean, you want to win. It's your whole life, right? Yeah. Uh, point number one, Andrew, I do think that the reason why the other athletes feel so comfortable, specifically Australian, British, the Americans have been kind of like neutral on it. They don't really want to say anything. Um, I do think there's sinophobia. Mm. I do think there's fear of displacement, of replacement, or at least destabilization at the top of these uh, global hierarchies. Yeah, I mean, I also think those countries, you know, the France, Australia, Germany, they're feeling their own kind of uh, maybe sinophobia in their own country. I'm saying, like, even the country that they come from is going through certain political things. So everybody's emotions and feelings toward each other is kind of ramped up. Right now, right. and it is kind of strange. We go, they the said Olympics. it's very rare for the athletes to come out right after the race. Like, basically, you just lost the race, and you go up. The Chinese are doping. They're doping. They're doping. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, there's a lot of anti Asian sentiment right now. I'm gonna say that for sure, for sure. And you know what was interesting is some people were even trying to get at uh, Kim Yeji for using all that equipment versus the Turkish guy who wasn't using the eye equipment on the air rifle. And I was like. Wait, so what are they trying to say? I mean, like, you know, one, one gold, one, one silver. I think the Turkish guy is cool too. But it is definitely like the attitude toward the Asian athletes that win the gold is a lot of people are like, oh, they they had too much equipment. They had too much help. Right, right, right. Um, Andrew, WADA actually came out and said that WADA has been thrust into a geo, uh, the middle of geopolitical tensions between superpowers, and we have no mandate to participate in that. Mm. Yeah, well, it goes to show you that clearly this beef between geopolitical superpowers is coming into play. Number two, yes, it is true, though, that more, I guess, what do you want to consider communist regimes, whether that's USSR in the past or the current version of mainland China, Andrew, they have been accused of state doping policies. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they've doped before. You know, I don't think it's an issue this Olympics, obviously, because they're all getting tested a lot and they're still succeeding. So it goes to show you that without doping, they're still succeeding. But definitely, I mean, yeah, you know, those those governments, they want Olympic gold so bad that they'll kind of push it themselves and really push the limits and maybe cross the line. Right, right, right. But a lot of people were also bringing up Lance Armstrong. He was America's gold, America's golden child. It found out, uh, people found out later he was doping. Yeah, and actually he got... Everything taken away, right? Right. Well, he was already, like, so rich and famous by then. I'm right, sure that right, it's right. almost like people almost forgot that. So, I mean, yeah. On a fan duel odds probability bet, do I think that they probably may have taken recovery drugs in the past four years? I would say it's certainly possible. But, David, is it fair that if your reputation is that your country may have doped in the past, that you are seen with suspicion? Is that fair for other people. Now, it, it may is fair that they, the Chinese athletes get tested more than other countries. I don't think it would be fair if you're purposely waking them up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the middle of their sleep to potentially test them because that's like you're messing up people's sleep pattern at that point on purpose to almost like weaken them. But yeah, I guess everybody has to be, uh, be beholden to their reputation, right? Right, right, right. right. But if they, I'm saying if they pass the test, then what? I don't know what this Australian guy is asking for, but take the medals away because of their race. Right, right. Because of the reputation of a couple people in the past, right? That's what right. he's saying. Well, you know, like, well, you better take away those medals because uh, of some people on their team in the past. It's like, what? And the truth is he's probably doing stuff too, but he may not be just, it might be on his own with his own squad and his own trainers. Point number three. White people cannot imagine losing at a sport that has been white dominant for so long. Yeah, guys. So uh, typically a lot of people figure that the Asian countries or the less athletic countries are going to dominate or win golds in these obscure sports like air pistol or curling or like these things that are not mainstream sports. Well, they'll that even give really up about. archery, right? Archery, right? But swimming and tennis... Those are very, really big, popular sports. Right. Well, we gave, we gave up track and basketball a long time ago to people who don't look like us. I'll be damned if we give up tennis and swimming. Dang. And, and I never understood. I was like, is swimming some, like, sh sh 
great show of like physical is that like because it has a lot to do with like how tall you are your hands your feet and your lung capacity well you know the british were always the best seamen and we could always swim the furthest so it only makes sense that the white anglo-saxons also dominate the seas in the olympics right we did sail around the world and colonize it at one point point number four not all Asians even support mainland Chinese athletes in the same way that they would root for Japanese, South Korean, Hong Kong, or Taiwanese athletes. Shout out to the Philippines, by the way. This, they won a bunch of medals this uh, year. In the, uh, they have one guy, Yulo, who was killing it in gymnastics. And I guess that there is a fear even within Asia, and some people don't know how to feel about Pan John Lei's win within Asia. Mm. Because there is some fear that like, China may try to take over Asia. But what, from some people. Just because, you mean take over Asia from an Olympic standpoint or literally from a economic and like political standpoint? No, I think the fear from the economic and political standpoint seeps into how you feel about the Olympic athletes. Yeah, listen, the Olympics have always been kind of politicized. We understand this. So I guess uh, maybe it actually shouldn't surprise anybody that they're being politicized right now in the age of social media. Um, right now, point number five, Andrew, what does it even mean if China surpasses the U.S. in the gold count for the number one spot? Yeah, so right now they're tied. Both countries, I believe, have 22 gold medals as of filming this video. What does it even mean if China surpasses? Obviously, they even got less total medals than America. America's killing it. No one's going to reach them. America sends by far the most athletes. Yes, and, and they have the most medals. So, um... But China, like, what does it even mean if China wins? I mean, I don't know if people should worry so much. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like we we just made a video about India and how India is not known for winning a lot of medals. I mean, I think that their sports systems are kind of far behind. So maybe right now it's not, it shouldn't be their biggest worry to, oh, we're not winning medals or like even China is winning so many medals. It's like, what does that mean to on a geopolitical scale. But isn't it because it's a layman's way of understanding how all systems in a country are performing? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess if you believe it's a reflection of your overall systems, but I'll tell you, it's probably more of a reflection of the military systems, if anything, because the USSR is good at the Olympics, America's good at the Olympics, and China's good at the Olympics. Right, and Russia was banned basically essentially from this Olympics, but they're, which, usually, which actually, they're usually pretty good. If Russia, since Russia got banned, it did kind of help everybody else get more medals, to be honest. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, they were only allowed to send like 55. I think they were capped under a different name. Um, point number six, a lot of people are saying the, the Olympics are washed, but are they saying the Olympics are only washed because whites aren't really winning as much as they used to. Yeah, pretty much anything where like white people are not dominant at it is is gonna be considered wash on some level. You well, know you know, I, mean? I stopped watching the NBA after like Michael Jordan started dunking on everybody. You know, I just didn't. I don't know when I, why I gave it up. I don't know what it was about the NBA that made me stop watching. Yeah, I mean, I think listen. White people are still very athletic. <laughs> I don't know what everybody's so worried about. I just think there's less white people competing, man. I mean, you still got Michael Phelps, greatest Olympian ever, you know. He's super white. So I think, like, at the end of the day, I don't know, man. I, I guess if there's less white people trying and the rest of the world, to be honest, is coming up. I mean, you look at South Sudan. They were able to grab uh, all these different players of South Sudanese uh, uh, descent from all over the world to come back and play. And they're one of the biggest, like, kind of Cinderella stories of the Olympics, to be honest. One of the biggest surprises. Right, right, right. It's a war-torn country. Yeah. Well, it's a brand brand new country, too. They just started. And, yeah, it's a rough Shout place. Shout out to Luol Deng. Sure. Um, some comments on the internet said, these French Olympics have been the worst of all time. All sportsmanship is dead. Screaming fences. Po-faced Chinese winning everything. Sulky athletes moaning because they didn't medal. You weren't fast enough all, all overall just tasteless. Mm. And does it remind you of how people said the Oscars were dead once basically Asians swept the Oscars with everything everywhere all at once? It's almost like as all these old guard systems begin to lose relevance, that's finally when the Asians come in. Mm. But I'm saying that, like, where does that narration that this whole system is worthless now, why, why does that coincide with the Asians doing well? Right, right, right. Now, Hollywood doesn't mean anything anymore. They released that movie Shang-Chi. It, 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 it clearly doesn't mean anything. <laughs> right. Um, oh, my gosh. They're just giving everybody movies now. Yeah, yeah. Man. Just, just, you know, um, 
Let's just take a look at the comments section here. Somebody said, between Pan getting doping allegations and Emane from Algeria getting called a man, it seems like white people just can't handle losing to the global south. Mm. Basically, countries that used to have very little status for decades now coming up. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, de I definitely think there's some of that. Like I said, this the replacement or the displacement. And well, just feeling I, I, like you're, you're losing some you know, dominance you used to have. Yeah, I think the, the sheer dominance is being lost it doesn't mean that they're still not the best actually it's just that the sheer dominance is not going to be there the ease at which they used to dominate is no longer there right um people are talking about you know a lot of internal arguing between asian americans about whether to support john pan lay yeah i mean pan john lay like some people are saying well we should because how he's viewed affects how we're all viewed and other people are like no my mother country doesn't like china right now so i'm not supporting uh, Pan John Lei either. Of course, these are like internal Asian dynamics. And uh, basically, ultimately, here's the funny thing, Andrew. There's a lot of geopolitical undertones to the Olympics, even though politics are supposed to be kept out of the Olympics. Right, but they're definitely part of the Olympics. Yeah, it reminded me of the USA versus, I don't even think it's like on this level, but it reminds me of the USA versus USSR. There was a miracle on ice when the American hockey team beat Russia in 1980. And people thought that was like, impossible and that was at the peak of the cold war yeah the thought that yeah we pretty much won the cold war because of that you know what i mean like the feeling is i mean how can it not be politicized you literally have different flags competing against each other and sometimes in contact sports you're literally trying to beat the other person beat the other flag so of course it's political flags are political right so anyway guys let me know what you guys think in the comments section below is it valid? Is it invalid? I'm sure there's going to be a ton of opinions across the board based on, you know, probably your views on geopolitics. But let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hop Out Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.